Hello and welcome. In this video series, I want to show you how to set up and solve a relatively simple linear stochastic programming problem. After having introduced the contents of this video series, I will introduce a simple example which deals with the problem of either investing today or later. In this example, I will use deterministic input data and we will find the optimal investment strategy by looking at cash flow statements. In the second video, we will represent and solve the same problem by means of a linear program with both binary and continuous decision variables. In the third video, we will model the uncertainty in the input parameters of this problem by means of a scenario tree. In the same video, we will also solve our decision problems by means of a decision tree. In the fourth video, we will model our stochastic problem as a linear optimization problem. We may refer to such a model as the deterministic equivalent to a stochastic pro programming problem. In the fifth video, we will shortly discuss how we can derive the value of an option to delay or postpone an investment. So, let's get started. In this Excel spreadsheet, you see two cash flow statements for an investment. And we want to analyze whether the investment should be undertaken at the end of 2021 so let me just put in here this years. We have 2021 until 2023. And in the first case, we want to analyze uh, what will be the final wealth generated if we start the investment in the end of 2021. Okay, and then in the next step, we want to see what will be the final wealth if we start the investment in 2022. So we want to decide whether we want to start the investment in 2021 or 2022. Okay, on the left hand side here, we will analyze this investment when it started in the end of 2021. And at this point in time, we have a cash outflow that represents the acquisition costs of this investment. And these acquisition costs, they are 1000 whatever monetary units, for example, US dollars or Euro. So we have here minus 1000. And then in the end of 2022, we obtain an expected cash flow of 1,200. So let me just get rid of this coloring here before we continue. So let me everything have black. And then let me also copy uh, these row headings or these row descriptions to the right hand side. And then let us have a look at the table on the right hand side. Here we see if the investment is started in the end of 2022. We will here have the same acquisition costs. And one year later, we will receive an expected cash inflow, which also is 1200. If we start the investment in 2021, then there will be no cash flow generated after 2022. So let me add a zero here. Okay, let us now look how this investment is financed and let us assume that in the beginning of 2021, we have an equity of exactly 1000. And we have this amount of equity in both cases. So also if we postpone the investment. So whenever we have some idle cash, we can de dis deposit uh, so this idle cash on a savings account with an interest rate of 5%. If we undertake 
or if we start with the investment in the end of 2021, then we see there is no idle cash because the equity is just uh, uh, sufficient to pay for the acquisition costs. So there will be no deposit on the savings account. But then let's go one period ahead in time. This means to the end of 2022. And here we see we receive a cash inflow of 1,200. And we will put this amount of money on the savings account. Then one year later, this means in the end of 2023, we will receive this amount that we have put on the savings account plus all the earned interest. So we have here this 1,200. So I, I will link this calculation to the amount that we have deposited. And then we calculate times one plus this interest rate of 5%. So basically then we can withdraw 1260 from the savings deposit in the end of 2023. And this money belongs to the equity holders or to the owner of the project. And we let the equity holders withdraw this money. And uh, this amount of 1260 basically represents the final wealth of the equity holders after the investment is carried out in the end of 2021. Okay, let us go to the other side. And here we see that in the beginning of the uh, planning horizon, which means the end of 2021, we have here this equity of 1000 and there's no cash outflow yet. So we will put all that amount or all this money on the savings accounts. And then one year later, we can withdraw this amount of money, including all the earned interest. So let me link this up and multiply with 1 plus 5% again. So we receive a positive cash flow, as you see here, in 2022. From this cash flow, we will pay the acquisition costs of minus 1,000. We see then we have basically some money left, which is 50. And this amount of money we will put on the savings account again. So let me write it like this and then we go one period ahead to the end of 2023 and then we will again withdraw the money from the savings accounts including all the interest that we have earned okay now we see that there is an investment cash flow coming of 1200 in addition we have this 52.5 and this money belongs again to the equity holders and let the equity holders withdraw this amount of money which together is 1252.5 and this again represents the final wealth of the equity holders okay you already see I have already added here a greater sign, which indicates that the final wealth generated, if we invest in the end of 2021, is greater than the final wealth if we postpone the investment to 2022. So this means uh, the decision would be that we invest into this project in the end of 2021. In the next video, we will see how we can model and solve the same problem by means of a linear program. See you then.